Hey guys, it's Bad Snacks here, and today we are talking about some nerdy shit. Today we are talking about Spotify's basic pitch, which is Spotify, like the streaming service, this is their audio to MIDI converter. And you heard me right, Spotify made an audio to MIDI converter that is available online literally right now. And it's open source. I'll explain all of this in a second. So the first thing that you gotta know is that Spotify has an R&D department and it's the same department that develops Soundtrap and if you're not familiar with Soundtrap, it's an online DAW, it's like a browser DAW. That same research and development department Spotify engineers created an audio to MIDI converter that is compatible with all DAWs and it is a browser-based converter. So anybody can use it and uh, worth mentioning, all of the files are localized so nothing is stored in a cloud or anything, it stays on your computer. So basically how it works is I could sing a thing like this and then I can upload it straight to basic pitch, convert to MIDI, adjust the MIDI, and then download it and use it in whatever DAW, whether it's Logic, Ableton, Reason, whatever your DAW is. And what makes this audio to MIDI converter really interesting, especially when you compare it to Ableton's in-house audio to MIDI converter, is that this one does a lot of polyphonic tracking, in my opinion, a little better, and it can detect pitch bends. So if I were to play my violin like this, then I would get something that sounds like this. And I really want to drive this home. This is an open source code. So you can find it on GitHub. It's a Python program. And the link is on basicpitch.spotify.com. And I bring this up because the engineers also really wanted to let everybody know that you can do whatever you want with this code. And they really want to see this code be evolved. And personally, my dream, my big, big dream here is I would love to be able to play violin as a MIDI controller. If I could get that in real time, version, especially with polyphonic tracking, that would be a game changer. So I'm really hoping that this video finds the right audience and we can find somebody who can make that happen because I would lose my mind. I'd be so happy. So today I'm going to show you how I made a new track called Virgo where I used basic pitch in a couple different instances in my workflow. So I'm going to show you how I did that using my violin, my harp, my voice, especially the violin solo. I'm excited to show you guys how that came out. Without further ado, let's get into the track breakdown and I'm going to show you how I used this audio to MIDI converter. So the first instrument that I used with all of this is the harp and those two chords inspired basically the whole thing. So then I recorded a vamp with the chords underneath. And when I actually recorded this, I separated the vamp from the chords. And by the way, everything here is doubled. So we have two vamps and two chords underneath. So I'm just gonna highlight one of the chords underneath. We don't need the double. And I'm gonna export it. And now we're going to just drop it right into basic pitch. So just take the audio file and drop it in. And then this is the real time conversion. So you'll see kind of how quick it works. Um, it does kind of advertise itself as a lightweight program, which I believe to be true considering how much it processes. And then boom, we have MIDI. So this is the first attempt at what it has gathered from the audio signal I've sent. And obviously it doesn't have everything, but I still think it's pretty good considering that the harp recording itself isn't like the cleanest. So now we're gonna go down to adjustments here and we're going to bring the confidence threshold down, which is basically how confident it was and how many notes there were in the first place. And then we have segmentation. So that's how we merge the notes so that we don't get like repeat notes. And then also the note length. So if they're long notes, we can set the threshold to be longer so it doesn't get like too many of these random small notes. And then uh, we have pitch threshold here. So I'm just bringing it down so that we don't get any of these kind of like random higher notes because there are no high notes here. And at this point, we're now getting a pretty good idea in terms of MIDI of what this harp has done, which I think is pretty cool. And now we can just set the BPM of the master file. So the master file is 90 BPM. So we're going to bounce it to 90 BPM so that we can just import it no problem. I am putting the name of this file as virgo underscore harp dot mid. In order to work seamlessly with Ableton, I find that putting the extension dot mid actually helps quite a bit for Ableton to recognize it. 
and then you just drag and drop it into a MIDI track and boom, there you go. And in this case, I actually have an operator going with like a very basic electric piano pad, but you can hear kind of what it's doing and you can see that there's velocity tracking underneath uh, and we have all of these notes here that we can now edit in MIDI. So fast forward a little bit, I've already put these through two Juno patches and this is what it sounds like in context after I've edited the chords to be a little bit longer. So then in the track, there is this recurring theme of this vocal line. And here's the vocal line soloed. And in this case, the vocal line is like super layered. So we're only gonna take one of them. We're gonna take the reverb off just so that it's a little easier to track. And same thing, we're going to export this little audio clip. And then we're going to take that same file and we're going to bring it right into basic pitch once again. And then we have our line. And you can hear that this one has a little bit more segmentation it's trying to re-articulate the same notes multiple times even though it doesn't need to. So this is where we would use the note segmentation edit parameter. So we're throwing this note segmentation way up so we can merge the notes. And already it's so much smoother. And then just like last time, we're going to set the MIDI BPM to the master tempo which is 90 for the session. And then we're gonna download that file. And now we can just take that and throw it straight onto a MIDI track. And now we can do some editing for some just small timing things and small timing adjustments. Like it doesn't show up on the grid perfectly quantized. It does actually match the performance of the vocals. And now we have this zither patch that is on Unclean Machine by Spectrosonics. It's part of their sonic extensions. And we're just doing a little bit of scene surfing, but I really loved scene five on this. It has this really nice chorusy effect. And then I just threw a quick delay on Echo Boy with this. And now here it is all together. So this is the part that I had the most fun with by a long shot because this part was crazy. It starts with this violin solo and I really just jammed like I wasn't thinking about things that would be easy to track I just played how I would normally play and then I doubled it and threw the second take down an octave just to thicken up the sound but you can hear like this phrase is not easy to track so we're gonna do the same process I'm taking the reverb and effects off and I'm only bouncing one of the takes I'm going to export that here and then take the file throw it through basic pitch this is what we got off the first try. Fast forwarding a little bit. And this is without any adjustments. This is the first try and it's pretty good. And we're going to add some more notes and then we're going to merge the notes that are kind of over articulated. And this one is already so much more accurate and more confident. And then once again, we're going to set the BPM and then we're going to download it. And this is where it gets super crazy because now we can throw it through a bunch of plugins. 
This is what it sounds like with just the basic operator patch. And what's crazy about that is that you can hear that it really is mirroring the articulations of the violin. Every time the bow changes, a new MIDI note is detected, which I think is crazy. So it works really well for phrasing. So now let's hear it in context with some Omnisphere patches. So now that we have this MIDI and we've kind of cleaned up some parts of it, um, just doing little minor adjustments here and there, I'm gonna throw it through a whole slew of plugins because I wanted to hear this solo through so many different synths and then I couldn't pick which synth that I wanted. So I just made a whole chorus of synths using primarily patches from Unclean Machine. So this is what it sounds like. So we have the old timer blues lead. And I particularly loved this patch because I feel like it had the most similar expression to what I was looking for, while still maintaining an organic element. And just a lot of dirt, so much dirt. And then I layered it with this patch called Breathalyzer on scene four, which is also from Unclean Machine by Sonic Extensions. Just messing with the drift setting here, which kind of gives it more of a lo-fi quality. And then if you guys have seen any of my previous videos, you know that I am obsessed with this one patch in particular off of Unclean Machine, which is called Ascension of the Flutes. It's one of my favorite lead patches, like maybe of all time. And I kind of snuck it in, in a way at the end of the solo. So it automates volume in, kind of blends, and then turns into this beautiful little flutey moment at the end of the track. And then as a final layer, I actually went to OG Omnisphere and there's this saucy Mogi lead that has this beautiful glide. And those are basically all the synths that I used for the ending solo here alongside the violins. So here's what the outro sounds like. That is the track. I hope you found this interesting. This is how I used it in my workflow as I was learning the technology and getting used to the interface. And yeah, in conclusion, I would say that this is a really great workflow tool, regardless of what DAW you're using, if you wanna take real instrumentation and directly synthesize it. Uh, I have a lot of fun with that, if you couldn't tell. Um, and regardless of if you use Ableton or not, I do think that this has better polyphonic tracking than Ableton and the pitch bend does make a huge difference in terms of expression and phrasing and stuff like that. And again, I really want to drive this home. If you know Python and you want to turn this into a real-time converter or elevate it in any kind of way, uh, the engineers and I are all super on board with that. We would love to see what you guys come up with, especially if you can turn it into a real-time converter because that would be game-changing. Please hit me up if you do that. I hope you guys enjoyed the new track. Uh, it's up on Spotify and all streaming platforms and I will be linking everything down below. So basic pitch, the new song, uh, and all of the plugins that I used, including Omnisphere's Unclean Machine and Seismic Shock, which you guys know that I'm obsessed with. And also these new tees. Uh, these are my tees from Tor and they are now available online. I love home music, this and the tape tee. So anyway, I'll link everything below and I sincerely hope that you guys enjoy using basic pitch and I really 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 hope that this video hits the nerd demographic that know what to do with it on Python so please keep us posted let us know what you end up doing with it and I think that's it okay bye